Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, patreon.com slash popretro. And uh, you can find us on Twitter at popretro1, that's the number one. Same thing with Instagram, popretro1, you can find us there. So uh, today I wanted to talk about a late 80s movie called Dark Tower. It reaches heaven and it touches hell. Sounds like a dark tower to me. So uh, this was released recently by the boutique uh, releasing company uh, Vinegar Syndrome. And it, it, Vinegar Syndrome has been one of my favorite releasing companies. They've been, uh, gosh, releasing so many things from back when I was in junior high and high school and watching a lot of these films on uh, VHS, late night cable and of course a lot of this crap aired on the uh, usa up all night which you know that was a staple for me back uh, in my earlier years so this thing dark tower is not one that i remember i it may have aired on uh up all night uh, or, or cable back in the day but i don't remember it so it was really fun to actually get to check this out i chose to do this one on this video because it's getting a lot of negative reviews. A lot of people don't like it in forums, online forums and online Facebook groups and things like that. Um, mainly people who buy a lot of releases from the company that released this on Blu-ray, Vinegar Syndrome. So a lot of the people think it's boring and uh, some of their complaints are that it, you know, it doesn't have a lot of gore it doesn't have a lot of the things that they have come to uh, 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 expect from releases from this company. And so, and, and you know what? They're not totally wrong. They're not totally wrong when it comes to this. So, first of all, let's take a look at the packaging. We got uh, the Dark Tower slip cover by this company. And, and Vinegar Syndrome has the best slip covers. They're high quality. People love them. And uh, when people are missing these slip covers they go online on ebay and pay huge bucks for them so uh this one's no exception it's it, the art's really cool it's it's redrawn uh or, or reimagined i guess from the uh the, the well the film itself and perhaps the uh, uh previous art that was created back in the 80s so here's the back side of it and uh, that's actually a picture of a guy that will uh you know that it's important to the plot of the film but anyhow um i digress excuse me so we got dark tower this is kind of I, I believe the slip art here is try to get the light glare off it I, I this is i assume what was uh offered on the vhs cover back in the day so as you can see it is a tower and it is dark this is a dark tower. So um, I'll read the back just so you can get a, a quick flavor. A recently completed luxury high rise in the center of Barcelona, that's in Spain, folks, uh, becomes the scene of an apparent accident, which causes the death of a construction worker. Now, when they say construction worker, I watched the film and it's actually a guy who was cleaning the one of those window washers several stories up. So, um, a window washer, not a construction worker, in my opinion, but perhaps uh, they're the same construction workers and window washers. Anyway, I once again digress. Let me continue. Finding an, al uh, finding an unlikely ally in Dennis Randall, a grizzled cop now working as a private security consultant, the two decide to launch their own investigation into the mysterious goings on in the building. But it's not long before another grizzly accidental death occurs and that's kind of what this movie's all about it's about um this woman played by one jenny augeter and uh she's a you know she's a favorite from back in the day and uh she is an architect who runs an architectural firm out of this building the dark tower and mysterious deaths keep happening and of course these deaths are uh um, mysterious by nature and supernatural by nature. And at first, at least in the first part of the movie, these deaths are not uh, 
uh, you know, they're not, it's not like the wall has come alive to stab you or something. It's more like the, the, uh, uh, the, the elevator shaft, you know, gets taken over, uh, by the spirit within and decides to, to, uh, uh, send the elevator down very fast, crashing down, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, oh, now, now what's funny though, is when you look at the slip, what do you see? You see a monster on there. And when I was watching this film, I was like, man, we're getting through this thing. <laughs> so you don't see the monster until kind of the last act of the movie. So, um, and I think that's probably one of the other complaints from, uh, people who have complained about this release a little bit like uh oh man it's boring you know they they want to see this monster that you put on the freaking slip cover so i get it i get it um shot in 1987 and not released until 1989 um and it was shot in barcelona as you know the back uh, of the uh, description said in the story so but what's funny is is obviously they they shot it in barcelona but it doesn't really matter. You could have shot this movie anywhere in a metro area where there are buildings, where there are a lot of people and high rises, and you could have had the, the same effect. But what's interesting is Barcelona doesn't really, it's, it's not really a quote character in this film uh, to me. Um, like I said, they did, I, I, I don't know. I don't think they used it as much as they could have to make it a character. But on the other hand, at the beginning of the movie, they have this very long opening sequence with the credits. And it uh, it's kind of funny because uh, they go uh, on and on showing this almost travelogue-like montage of Barcelona and the city and the Dark Tower. Um, of the title of the film and uh, and you think that that's going to play a big part but once they get into it you know everybody speaks English I mean for the most part and uh, you know it's just a regular film so um, it was directed by two people um, I'm looking down at my notes so I can remember what I wanted to talk about um, Freddie Francis the cinematographer uh, on David Lynch's The Elephant Man and the 1991 version of Cape Fear um, also directed four episodes of Man in a Suitcase. You can remember that uh, British TV show. Um, he's the guy who apparently directed this. And the other director is Ken Wiederhorn, who directed Return of the Living Dead Part 2. Okay. Um, and 1993's A House uh, in the Hills. And six episodes of a TV show I loved when I was a teenager called Dark Justice, which was a part of CBS's Crime Time After Prime Time, kind of a just an action adventure umbrella series of uh, TV shows back in the early 1990s. And so, um, according to the the Vinegar Syndrome write up on the back, it says directed pseudonymous, pseudonymously by acclaimed British cinematographer Freddie Francis. Uh, and col and co-scripted by cult filmmaker Ken Wiederhorn, Dark Tower is a suspenseful supernatural shocker that stars Jenny Augeter, as I mentioned earlier, Michael Moriarty mm -hmm, from TV's Law and Order, the first, those early years, and uh, Carol Lindley from the Poseidon Adventure is also in here, uh, and uh, one of my favorites, Theodore Bickel, um, who was uh, he was a member of that high IQ collective called uh, Mensa International. And I only know this because my favorite show growing up was Knight Rider. And he played a bad guy in an episode of Knight Rider where he was the leader of uh, this organization that was like Mensa. And he uh, brainwashed the mechanic of Kit you know the the talking car and night rider to to make him turn bad on his you know turn evil in the episode and so i i, I of course looked this guy up because i recognized him from this movie and i said oh man that's the same guy but what's interesting was he actually was in real life a member of mensa and he played a guy who was like the leader of an organization like mensa in that episode of night rider but once again, as always, I digress. So Michael Moriarty is hilarious. Uh, one of the reasons I liked this movie 
was not because I don't think it's a little boring for people who would want to see this type of thing, but <laughs> Michael Moriarty, who's, by the way, his, somebody pointed out in a forum, his name's misspelled in the opening credits of uh, Dark Tower. Um, it says Mark, Michael Moriarty. There's an extra I in it. So, of course, which just adds to the charm of this type of enterprise. So, uh, Michael Moriarty is so wooden, so serious, wooden, and stiff that it makes it worthwhile to watch. So every time he comes on the screen, I'm enjoyed. I I, I enjoy it. I, I I enjoy watching his performance because um, instead of it's like I'm not going to go over the top. I'm going to stay very. Uh, stiff <laughs> and that's that's kind of the the performance you get so um uh, gosh uh ann lockhart is also in the film and uh patch mckenzie is also in there and uh and there's a funny um small part by uh, uh kevin mccarthy <laughs> and he comes in um playing a uh well, Theodore Bikel is actually one of these guys that's able to to talk with the other world or whatever and uh, 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 speak with the spirits. Well, he's not enough, so he brings in Kevin McCarthy, his his buddy in this stuff. But McCarthy, it just seems like McCarthy maybe was in town in Barcelona while they were filming this and said, hey, can you just do a few scenes while you're here? Sure thing. So... Uh, he, he's kind of brought on as 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 somebody who's going to be very big in the in the uh, the resolution of the plot, but it never happens. He winds up uh, um, kind of just uh, flitting away without spoiling it, without much fanfare, almost as if he just kind of stumbled in drunk and uh, stumbled out uh, of the uh, of the shoot. So, anyhow, it's it's a ghost story. It's a uh, if I could describe it, it's a it's just kind of a ghost story. It plays out like a made for TV movie uh, in a lot of ways. And um, I like that sort of thing. I don't need to have gore and all the trappings of the exploitation thriller in everything that I watch. So um, I've already made this review a lot longer than I need to make it. So I'll just say that uh, vinegar syndrome, excellent job on the transfer. Uh, it looks great. Only one extra feature, and that is a interview with special effects artist Steve Neal. And, uh, well, they also have a promotional still gallery, reversible cover art, uh, English SDH subtitles. But uh, the, the main uh, extra feature is that interview with a special uh, effects artist, which was fun to watch. He um, talks a little bit up. Uh, about the movie, mostly about his uh, career. And uh, here's the disc. Might as well show you that. And take that out so I can show you the... Well, the reverse art, I guess, is the same as the, uh, the slip cover. So um, I guess that maybe means that the slip, that the slip cover was actually uh, maybe, you know, taken from or inspired by at least one of the old VHS covers or something. So I don't know. Either way, I would say if you like stuff that happened in 1989, movies that came on in 1989 that were cheap and you watch late at night on cable because you were 14 years old or 13 like I was in 1989, then I would say don't feel bad about picking this up because that's what it plays out like. And I love this era of silly, low-budget, cheap jack film. So, hey, thanks for checking it out. And uh, again, uh, patreon.com slash popretro, popretro1 on Twitter, pop Pop Retro 1 on Instagram. So if you want to check us out there. And I'll see you again soon. All right.